Hey everybody, it's The Happy Critic. So I kind of wanted to talk about some of the new releases that will be coming out in 2024. I kind of wanted to look into the films that are going to be gracing the big screens this year. So not any like Netflix releases or anything like that. I, let's go through some 2024 movie releases and see what we have in store for us. And if you hear anything, it's my cats. So. All right, Madam Web. Um, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, everyone was talking about how this movie looked really bad, but, and they were referring to this line where she, Dakota Johnson's character says, Ezekiel Sims. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. And it's like, yeah, that's bad, I guess. But it, more so for me, the part that looked really bad that made me think, ugh, was the scene where she's like, talking to or talking to these people and they're like in the woods or something i can see the future oh what the hell she didn't see that coming that's <laughs> not how it works i don't know why but that scene i just found really cringy and i was like is this gonna be like kind of a girl movie where it's all revolving around girls and I'm not saying that movie revolving around girls can't be good but it depends on why if the reasoning is because we want to have girl power quote unquote then it's gonna suck really really bad so no i'm not looking too forward to that all right next movie we have is lisa frankenstein it might be fun it looks kind of look fun i guess um i guess one of the writers or somebody that is um, part of the project was somebody that was connected to Jennifer's body, which I I really liked that movie. <laughs> I feel like it's kind of one of those movies that not a lot of people have seen, not a lot of people talk about, but I actually thought it was pretty good. All right, so yeah, I kind of look forward to that one. That was kind of fun. Oh, wow, Bob Marley, One to Love. Um, I, I like Bob Marley from what I've heard of him. Like, I don't like biographies. I don't like movies that are based off like a real person, and I don't... <laughs> You know, if I want to watch or learn about their story, I can read about it. Why would I want to watch a movie that is going to dramatize things? And then when I look it up, it's going to be like, well, yeah, this happened in the movie, but actually in real life, it never happened. So, and, and it's, that's pretty much what happens when they make like movies based off of true stories or whatever. It's like, is it true? This is a true story. This is based on a true story. These, and it's like, actually, no, nothing you watch in that movie probably happened like one little thing happened like the li a little bit of the premise kind of happened so i'm not a big fan of it i don't like i don't like movies based off of true stories okay so this is probably gonna get me in trouble so the american society of magical negroes so from what i've heard of this movie and what i'm reading right now this seems just so very very stupid it's satirical, I guess. I feel like a lot of people just kind of hide behind. It's like, well, you can't say anything bad about it because it's satirical. Therefore, you can't say nothing. Uh, okay, look. So black people, they derive their power from the act of making white people's lives easier. <laughs> I just don't know what to say. <laughs> um, I'm going to watch this movie. This just seems mean-spirited to me. Stop focusing so much on your race or your gender or something like that. Like, that's not your personality. Be yourself and just live your life. And most people don't care. I hate everybody equally, so let's just stick to that. All right, another Zendaya movie called Challengers. Oh my gosh, okay. A tense love triangle ups the stakes for a trio of elite tennis players. Yeah, no, I'm not watching that. <laughs> All right, so there's a movie coming out called Civil War. I don't, I don't know. Um, so Alex Garland, he did Annihilation. I actually did a, like Annihilation. I don't have a, I don't have a lot of hope for this though. It's, it, it seems that it's going to have a lot of political undertones. Um, so it's a dystopian thriller. Imagines a deeply divided America in the not so distant future ravaged by a violent second civil war. The film probes just how far people will go to defend their beliefs. Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll see what that's going to be like. I'll probably watch it, but. Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. 
Um, so I really, really liked the first Mad Max. I generally don't like prequels very much. I just don't like the idea of them. It's like, we know how it ends, so what's the point? It's, it's kind of like all the spoilers have been told, so why would I care? And that's kind of how I feel about this. When I, I mean, I knew we were going to get a Mad Max, another Mad Max movie. I just thought we were going to be moving on from the first one we saw. The Tom Hardy one. Obviously not the original ones with Mel Gibson. Um, but I wasn't really wanting a Furiosa film. Um, I guess it does make sense a little bit because in the Mel Gibson films, we have explored Mad Max. We've explored his character and we've followed him for a while. So I guess maybe we now are going to follow a different character. I will say that, what's what's this girl's name? Anya Taylor-Joy or something like that? Yeah, Anya Taylor-Joy. I like her. She definitely doesn't look like Charlize Theron, who plays Friosa in Mad, the first Mad Max movie. I'm definitely gonna see it. Dune part two. So, um, yeah, so I watched the first Dune and I know a lot of people are gonna get mad at this if you're a really big Dune fan. I like the world that it's creating. I like that it's creative. I like that it seems that whoever is behind the story, whoever is directing this, it seems like there's a lot of passion put into it and I really appreciate that. The first movie, or the Dune part one, was really long, okay? And not like a ton happened. So I feel like they could have tightened up a little bit, but I think that was one of the director's parameters for directing the film was that he wanted to be able to, what was it? He like wanted to make it into a part, like two parts or something like that. Like he just wanted to be able to put as much content as he needed to in there because of how much material there was to work with or something. But I'm actually kind of excited. I, I, I'd like, I want to see it. I do have one gripe and I could be wrong. Zendaya, she's fine. She's barely in Dune part one. However, from what I saw of her in the first one, I remember thinking she just doesn't really fit into this world. Zendaya reminds me of one of those actresses where she kind of can't play in like a fantasy or like a period piece. There's something about her where she just exudes like being modern or something. Kind of, kind of like um, Cameron Diaz. Kind of like Cameron Diaz, I feel like she can't really do that either. And maybe in this movie, maybe in part two, when I get to see her more, maybe she will do a great job. And I'll be like, yeah, she's totally, definitely the best person for this role. So we'll see.